it's board game vibe time once again and today we're looking at trans america and trans europa and for me these are the gateway games you use if you're wanting something that's train themed much better than ticket to ride i think ticket to ride is what you step onto after you've enjoyed uh, these two games or maybe just one of them but uh, so let's have a look at them and uh, see why I think they're so good. So Transamerica has a single piece of paper with instructions on both sides. It's a two to six player game. And also in the box you get a board showing a map connecting cities. Now the cities, as you can see, have different colours. There are five colours, orange, blue, yellow, red and green. And for each city there's an individual card reflecting on the back the colour of its city, which is quite good. In terms of other components, there are score markers. So for a three-player game, we've got these nice little wooden trains. There's about 84 wooden black pieces to represent track, which we'll get to later, and um, a start player card, etc. For separating the two to three-player and the five, four, five, six-player games, um, there are additional cards. So for a two to three-player game, we take these cards out. So it's a nice way of this game to scale for a number of players. Basically, the colour cards are taken out and smeared on the, the, the board, and a player takes into their hand a hand of five cards, one for each colour. So here's my hand here, and a um, nice touch with this version of the game is the city is shown graphically on the map, so you get a feeling that Jacksonville is southeast, etc., and Portland is northwest. And uh, the goal of the game is to connect your five cities before anyone else does. But let's look at that mechanic a little bit closer. So, commencing with the start player, they can place their marker, and my little yellow marker's here, uh, at any intersection on the board at all. So it doesn't have to be at a city, it could be at a city, or just where the lines connect. Given I've got the New Orleans card, and I've been fortunate in this hand that Jacksonville's next to it, and clearly my opponents are placed well away, it's probably my best interest to maybe start at New Orleans. And then, once everyone's started, you get to lay track. Basically a simple rule, you, um, let me say, can lay two pieces of single track on a single line, such as here, and that way... Um, you keep playing two pieces. Now the difference is on the map when we come across rivers or hills you see these double lines so they take twice the effort to build the bridge or dig the hill. So on those places on my next turn if I wish to use a double I can only place a single one there. And so the map grows so um, let's fast forward a bit and see what's happened. So the game starts where most players are typically in isolation. They start developing their track. Um, as you might be aware, I'm after going from Jacksonville, New Orleans, Oklahoma City. So I'm doing pretty good. I've connected. Oh, I need to connect one more here. Um, and that's my next turn. So that's part one. And now part two. So the key to the game is once I connect to other people's track, I can use their track. So connecting my second piece there gives me access to the whole network, which is very important because, as you can see, I'm off to uh, Bismarck, which is way there, so I can use the other player's track. So on my next turn, I can place a piece of track here, and then maybe a piece of track here, and then I'm one more track away from Bismarck. So that gives me Jacksonville, New Orleans, Oklahoma, Bismarck. Still got Portland to go, and... Uh, Seemingly in this example, no one's developed to the west coast. Uh, I may not be able to leech onto other people. And that's part of this game, really. It's, it's how good a leech are you at uh, getting other people to build track for you. So, how do we do the scoring once it's complete? So, it's near the end of the game. It's my turn. And uh, I've just got across the mountains to get to Portland. Therefore, I can only lay one piece of track. Of course, it's a double, but one is all I need. I place it, and uh, yippee, I've connected my five cities. So now everyone else essentially has to work out how much track 
short, or sorry, how many sections short they were to work out their point penalty. So let's look at Red. Red just needed one more turn, one more track to get to um, Charleston. So they needed one point to get it, so we move them down the track one. Now, um, unfortunately, Green was also going to Los Angeles, but uh, needed to cross the river and the mountains, and they're both double, so that's two plus two, so that's four points. So Green moves four, one, two, three, four. So at the end of the first turn, uh, one player stays happy where they are. Red has only needed one point there, and Green's four. And we basically rinse and repeat. We clear off the tracks off the board, we clear off our markers, we reshuffle the cards, and we keep going. And the game ends when someone basically gets to zero. This particular version of the rules has the case that after two rounds, if people are playing very well, you tend to move this scoring marker up to, say, two squares short of where they are, but uh, typically we normally play till, till zero. Once someone's out, the winner is the person with the most points remaining. Uh, slightly disappointing mechanism, but in this type of game, that's all you can do it. Um, what I like about this game, it's a zen process. If you're very calming as you just lay down track, and uh, then it gets a little bit quicker when you can connect. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is Trans-America. Now, there's an expansion for Trans-America, Trans-Europa, which is possibly the world's smallest expansion for any game pop. Um, just bits of coloured wood. Uh, it basically provides each player three check of their own colour, which acts almost as a way that only they can use that track. Hence the name of the expansion, Vexation. It's, it's, it's an alternate to the game. To be honest, I, I like the purity, if I can say that, of the, the base game. It's... Um, sort of slightly upsets the Zen apple cart when you suddenly start putting these roadblocks in front of people. But it's a, it's a nice little tweak um, for the latter games, the Vexation expansions included, as it should be. So um, that's Trans-America. We might just have a quick look at the board for Trans-Europa to compare the two. So Trans-Europa... Uh, has the rules. Only one rule change that I can make of it doesn't have this shortening the game length rule where you can not necessarily go all the way down to the end. So in this game you've got to get to zero. Um, there's the map of Europe. It, it looks a slightly more simplistic drawings I would think. It's not as clean. The actual gameplay with the map's interesting. A bit more tight. It doesn't Trans America seems to have the free open ranges. This is a bit more confined, constrictive. Um, and the other thing is in relation to the cards, whilst they've got little trivia items reflecting of an aspect of the town, you actually have to therefore see, try to find Oslo on the map because it's not reflected in the card. Uh, you do pick it up, but it's um, I prefer information rather than trivia in games, to be honest. Uh, so, Trans-America, I think, is a definite buy. Um, if you really like the theme mechanic, you'd probably get Trans-Europa for something different, but I think Trans-America is, is the one thing you need for your collection. Then maybe move on to Ticket to Ride or anything else. Or even if you've played a lot of games, this is a great little way of getting people into board gaming. So um, and with the noise in the background, I think that's the board game vibe.